What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Billy Collin. Matt D -D 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 J. And this is Magician. And the Jock. Guys, back in the studio <laughs> today, we have Mr. Josh Bell, Mr. 3P. Man. Glad yeah. to be back. Here to here to raise a little bit of cane with you guys. Hey, man. We recorded the first half of this, guys, without the audio plugged in. So <laughs> It was our second best work yet. The best <laughs> is now to come. So y'all are in for a treat. Thanks for coming back, man. What? I love it. <laughs> that was very feminine. <laughs> I love it. Excuse me. I love it. So today we're going to talk about your ego. And this is something Chris brought up. Right. Young Jock. Yep. The importance of your ego. Now, when you guys hear ego, what do you... To me, there's like a negative connotation with it, right? No one's ever said, Josh, you know what? He's got such a healthy ego. They love me because my ego. Cocky and ego kind of go hand in hand. And talking with Chris and looking up the actual definition, it's kind of a neutral term. Right. Chris, you want to read that for us? Yes, Producer I can, Chris. Billy. Producer Chris. <laughs> Producer Chris. So this ego is simply a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. So ego itself is not you have... Like, if you have your ego, it doesn't mean you're arrogant. It doesn't mean anything like that. It is literally what your sense of your self-esteem or self-importance is. We all is. have one. We all have I one. I guess, yeah. basically speaking, it's self-image. Yeah. Self-image. And I think Matt touched on it, too. I think we're conditioned in today's world where everyone, if you have a large ego, which I'm a big, I'm a big fan of because no one loves... Me Gosh. more than me. Yeah. <laughs> and you surprise everybody. And you've said this many times. Yeah, I've said this. You should. You should be your you. biggest fan. But today's world, if you're out there flaunting this ego, yeah, it's a bad characteristic right. or a trait. So I think we're gonna dive into that and we're gonna discuss what disturbs or distinguishes the bad part of the trait, the good part of the trait. What happens if you don't have an ego? Because mm. I think that's a big thing where a lot of people are struggling with nowadays. And I don't think, as much as everybody thinks, I don't think it's having too much ego. Mm. I think it's on the other end. What I want to do is, uh, let's start with the, with the negativity of ego. And it will debunk why it should be negative with the positives of All right. ego. Yeah. Well, so as someone who's been accused many times as being not Matt, Not Matt Dodge. Not, not Matt Dodge. Dodge. The guy, <laughs> the guy with um, twelve syllables in his last name, <laughs> OJ, um, been been accused of that for a long time, and it's always been baffling to me because I don't, I don't feel like it's intentional, right? So I think that's the first thing is to consider the source, right? Consider the source of where your, um, I guess critics are, yeah, where your critics your are, critics, yeah, and. Hate never comes from above you, right? Right. You know, we always talk about you're the average of your five friends. You're the average of the people around you. If you're around other high achievers, they're not going to look down on your achievement, right? They're not. If you say, hey, look, I want to go be on this show or I want to purchase this massive property, whatever dream big scheme you right. have in your head, they're going to be like, right on. Like, that's why you're in this it, group. Well, I had, a, I had someone actually talk about you and uh, about your ego. <clears throat> Not a, not someone or many people. Someone came up and said, "Some ones, Matt, some bodies." Matt really has a an an ego when it when he comes out and uh, and I Who's literally this, first of all, uh, first of all, female it was, uh, is it uh, confidential? Uh, guy, um, Austin, I think his name's Austin. Well, you don't have to actually air his name out, but it's a dude. Yeah, we'll, we'll tag. Him ain't worried. About him. We're gonna tag you in the show, Austin. Get Maybe at your boy. I, I ain't worried about him. Go ahead. It might have been. What's that guy's name? No, it's not important. Not important. Not important. Oh, it's messy. It, it, so, but uh, I said, okay. And I literally said, I was like, don't confuse his ego for confidence. Right. There's a big, big, like, gap in between that. Yeah. Or uh, um, it's not a gap. There's a small gap in between that. People yeah. think just because you're confident, you automatically have this huge ego. We all should be confident in what we do. That's right. And we should all have that kind of edge on us about being, like you said, Self fan, yourself, your biggest fan. I think we had talked on this earlier. It took us a while to get it. So y'all are in treat that we're getting there closer. So just get this back. Chris, I need you to read out pride to us. How was that grammar? Don't worry about the grammar. <laughs> Chris Dodge, will you read out pride to us, please? Pull, pull that mic up to you. Boom. Shakalaka. Okay. What do you got there? All right. 
Pride is a feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. All caps, self-respect. Self-respect. So I think this is the big thing we figured out after about 22 minutes of recording earlier. We're going to touch on right now. I think that's the big thing is when you people talk about ego, I think it's a big thing if you deserve it. So if you deserve it, I think that's in your eyes on what you built up to mm. deserve it. So if it's, you know, if it's something about work, which I think is not the way to hang your hat on work or stuff that can be taken away, you'd have to go off of, you know, your accomplishments. But if it's kind of off of your personal traits, your attributes, how you treat others, how you build yourself up, I think it's kind of the way to go. But unfortunately, in today's world, you're based, you know, you're, I would say you're leveraged, you're judged, you're judged and leveraged off of success and, um, what, monetary values what and stuff can't like. be taken away so that i mean what can't be taken away would be your i would say that's your passion but all in, in, in trend, it's internal in, internally right. yeah, it's going to be a passion job, you can lose you know god forbid if your family, family god apart. bless but yeah. it's still you know even if you lose that i think what josh is saying is you, the stuff that you accomplished in that that you can hang your hat on is what they cannot take away like if josh loses his job tomorrow he went 48 months salesman of the year or the the month i mean not he, quite 40 but i mean it's it sounds better coming out of billy's mouth it was 42 <laughs> for everyone that was concerned 14. and fat checking josh went 67 months and <laughs> 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 they, yeah they can't so they can you can lose that job but your accomplishment right they can't take your accomplishments away from you and that's right. that's basically what you're saying right. is that yeah, I, well, but, I got a question. What you said in the, the first take we did was part of the building blocks. Building up your, your personal traits, and if you're caring, giving, generous, all of those traits are something that nobody can take away. Now, I got a question. I want I want to name your – tell me three things you love. No, tell me five things you love, Matt. I know where you're going with this. Number Don't. one, Matt. Okay. <laughs> right. Number two, um, Matt. My, I have an alter ego named Matthew. Matt. Matthew? No, what Matthew. what do I love? I don't know, man. Being born in America. Right. American by birth, Southern by the grace of God. Right? I think we're in the best time ever to be alive. That's right. right. I'd rather be poor today than be the king of France 300 years ago. Right. Um, what do I love? Uh, freedom. Freedom. And I love uh, music. Nice. I, I was getting at this, but uh, Matt but stole my thunder here a little like bit. That, like a Facebook post. Yeah, I saw this the other day, and it honestly touched me. Someone posted and said, if you name five things or like if you started naming things you love, how long would it take before you landed on yourself? Yeah. And I think that's where we've been conditioned that like just because others are approving of where you're at, because maybe you're a little higher than them, maybe you're a little lower than them. But all that's noise. And I think that like and it's a big thing nowadays. It's like, why not broadcast who you are? Why not broadcast that I love me? You should love when in saying that you should say I love me the way I am now and what the person that I'm going to become. Right. What I'm what I'm working on. Right. But broad, I don't think you should broadcast it though because I don't think people care. Well, 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 well he, it, he's saying hypothetically. I mean, in no, no, your no, mind. Yeah, you, yeah. No, I'm saying like how you put it out. <clears> but there are people that go way on the other end and like look how awesome I am. We, we talked about right. social media and how. Hey, look at this Lamborghini when you realize uh, they rented it for an right. hour. Well, I, I think when I talk about broadcasting, for me, it's not it's not me saying it, right? You want other people to say it or think it, you know, like when I die, I want someone, I want people to say, you know what? Josh was generous. That's like my goal in life. So in order for me to be generous, I have to accomplish a few things so that way I can do things for others. But have the ability, to have the generous. ability. Exactly. Right. So I think that's the thing. And uh, who do you say? Walter Payton. Yeah. Say the quote for us one time. We say, if you're good, you'll tell people. If you're great, they'll tell you. Exactly. So I think, too, nowadays there is a stigma on boosting others because they're not there. Today's stigma is now pulling you down. So I think if you could literally take the hate and if you just hardwire it that, you know, that's my fan club. Well, I think, uh, so there's a guy named Larry Wingett. They call him the pit bull of personal development. But he talks about um, 
you can't have rabid fans without having rabid haters, right? right? We are conditioned in school, right? You take every subject to be well-rounded. Nobody is well-rounded. You don't want your heart surgeon to be well-rounded. You want him to be specialized. You want to be specialized. Best of the best in heart surgery. You don't care if he's a chiropractor or if he has a good golf game. You don't care about any of that. You're focused in on that, right? So we are conditioned in a way to be brought up to to smooth the rough edges. Right. So question, if if he's the best of the best heart surgeons, let's let's diagnose that. How does someone become the best of the best of their fields? Right. And to me it's not uh like that it wouldn't be the best heart surgeon. It ain't battling the heart surgeons. It's battling his internal demons or what he thinks makes him more comfortable so that way he can succeed in his line of work. Mm. So I'm thinking he's, you know, to me, the best heart surgeon is not coming in there 300 pounds because mm. I'm not trusting that guy because I unless he's got like three or four stints. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still alive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I think I think that's the thing, too. It's like everyone nowadays hangs their hat on their career. Yeah. Because that's what you're judged on. Well, it's like at the gym, you don't want a fat personal trainer. No, uh, yeah, but the the personal trainer with the big muscles and stuff ain't nothing if they're if they're not happy with their life. So I think a big thing too is boiling down purposely like what makes you click, what makes you tick. And for me, it's like I want to work on the being the best I can be of myself, and then other things happen organically. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's the thing. It's like building your base of the tree, and then you got your leaves, and your tree, you know, what do they call limbs, tree leaves, all that stuff. (laughs) This is the, listen to me, this is the avenue of business. And you get those petals out there. You bedazzle them with brilliance, or you baffle them with bullshit. That is brilliant. That's business. Exactly. But when they come to cut down the tree, it's thick. It's (laughs) thick. (laughs) <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. And today, listen, I want you to really think about that. In today's world, the stuff that they're like going to knock at is like the work, uh, who you hang around with, um, fitting it. I mean, all this stuff, things that can be taken away. But if you really boil it down to if you're anchored on stuff that can't be taken away from, you have no problem listening to the noise and listening to these haters. But if you haven't built up that tree trunk and got it nice and thick, if that's where we're going with this, you know, synonym, <laughs> whatever these words are. <laughs> but if you don't have yourself prepared and you're only hanging your hat on off the limb and one person chops the limb down, you're going all the way to the bottom. And I think that's the big thing nowadays are people, they're, they're just hoping that they can say, hey, I'm going to land myself a millionaire. I'm going to have this. I'll feel better when I'm doing this. And when that doesn't happen, it's a long way to the bottom Verse, you know, you woke up, you went to the gym, you got your house clean, you ate healthy for breakfast. Then you go to work. What's the worst case that happens? You don't do good at work. So how far are you going to fall? That's a lot of stuff. It's important to you though, right? If I come to you then all I know you is Josh, the car salesman, Correct. that's all I care about. I exactly. don't care if your bed's made. I right. don't care if that's all intrinsic stuff. Sure. And we talked about the first time we tried this, mm-hmm. the concept of the undercover boss, which is, I, I love that. And, and back to ego, right? When someone right. says he's got a huge ego, they're basically saying he's carrying himself in a way that's way bigger than what he actually is, right? right. He's full of shit. Right. He's, it's the little guy at the bar that's acting like they can beat everybody. It's the chihuahua that's barking the loudest, Right. Man, I'm a little sky Hello. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call no, it Napoleon yeah. complex. And just look at successful people and look at how they move. Right? I th- I think they move very similarly though. I think it's it's, you know, you might be a specialist in this field, but I think everyone's background is very similar in they have cores, core values or core things to them. Oh, that I'm, no fuel, doubt. that fuels that like success in your workplace or whatever. But I mean, when I used to, when I first started and I didn't wake up early, you know, I didn't have certain things lined up. I wasn't producing as good as I am now. There are, there are certain things that are universal. Exactly. So I think, you know, boiling down the complex to something very generic that makes a lot of sense to people. Like you build off the basics and then you can sprout. 
Mm -hmm. So I think that's the big thing where nowadays people are, I've said this before in the other one, people are missing the basics. They say the blocking and tackling. Yep. Blocking and tackling basics, getting up, trying to get better every single day. And that's working on yourself because most of people's jobs, uh, relationships, friends and family is at some point it's going to boil down to how healthy is Billy yeah. mentally, spiritually, physically. Yeah. So I think that's the three things you got to really work on is, you know, you can always, you can have one high end of other, one low end of the other, or you could be, you know, working on all three. But I think that's a big thing nowadays is nobody talks about how's Matt doing mentally, spiritually, physically. <laughs> you know, there's some things, there's more, some things we got to work on nowadays. Cause big more definition than a dictionary. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's the thing too, though. Like, you know, what if you got so focused on work that you forgot those three and then work goes away? Well, it comes to being well balanced is what you're getting. Yeah, exactly. You're and I'm going to be well balanced in all three of those things. And with that being said, if someone calls me an ego because I am well balanced, not, okay, fine. Call me an ego. I, don't, or well, ego I mean, if you look at them, you could probably care, but... find the, you could probably find the reason they're attacking you. Right. But whether just, be, in, you know, just in general, I just, I, I, I hate, hate never comes from above. Right. right? I, so, I don't, I don't care what they say is because I'm the one that put in the 10,000 hours. Like when we talk about, when people talk about this channel and stuff, uh, we said it in the prior, oh, you should do this or that. Well, start your own. We're learning as we go. I don't, I understand people like to give criticism. I, I can accept it, but give criticism from where it comes from a good place. Right. If they want to give criticism, they can come sit right here with a microphone and come get on the show and kind of help. And, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a big thing. I said a, a switch that, uh, that flipped in my mind was yeah. um, get addicted to your phone. But instead of consuming content, start producing it. Right. Nice. Right. And when you get to where the guys who are killing it on social media, killing it, everything is from them out. Right. right? They're producing, 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 pushing out content. They're not consuming, consuming. The critics are coming. The reason Mr. Beast isn't leaving messages on our thing, hey, you should try this with the angle and blah, 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 yeah. is because he is busy producing. producing. Yeah. He, he has have time for He it. has figured out what Earl Nightingale said which is so profound is stop competing, start creating, right. right? If you're busy creating, you're good. Crimes happen because people are bored, right? right? There's never been somebody busy at work that said, Hey, sh holy shit. I'm going to go Billy, rob the Louis let's Vuitton. Go, or let's go rob a convenience store. Right. Well, no, I, it's because they're bored. Mm -hmm. Bored. And I think we talked about this on a previous show. It's kind of the you versus you. And I think that's the thing we forget. You say your biggest competition. Your biggest competition. It's not you. It's not you versus Matt. Because sometimes, you know, like me and Matt, we can't compete with squats. I got them. <laughs> I mean, there's just certain, there's just certain things that I'm going to be better at. And, but no, on a serious note, I think that's the thing too, is you go, you got people that are upset where you are. And then you got other people, you're upset where they are. But if you can, if you can like demask that and just say, Hey, I'm going to worry about where I am today versus where I was yesterday. And then that's what I'm going to work off of. Then my old sales manager used to tell, used to call this a saying sometimes you got to be seven foot tall and bazooka proof. So how do you become seven foot tall? Not bulletproof, freaking bazooka proof. Mm. And that's where you know that like, Hey, my foundation, no matter what I built it off of is yeah. so strong that I'm not worried about your two cents. Yeah. And that's where you like, I think a big thing, you got to protect yourself and this is protecting your ego. Oh the e man. I can tell you as being a former professional athlete, the worst thing I could do is go on Twitter or go on anything and start reading comments. Right. Especially with the, you know, people attacking you're, and you're in a public job or whatever. Like I don't care how mentally strong you are. You read a hundred comments, you suck. This guy's a bum. You, you're going to start to believe it. Absolutely. Well, shit, if, if you hear like a hundred comments on how great you are and you get one negative comment, yep. you focus on, on the, the negative, negative. comment. Right. Like a... Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I'm saying. In today's world, I feel really bad. There's a lot of people that are so-called depressed or they're, you know, they got so many things going against them. And that's because they haven't, they're so worried about the outside noise. They haven't developed their base. And, you know, they're so worried about, like, I should have my own career. I should be working on my own dream. That's the new thing right nowadays is quitting your job and working on your dream instead of working on other people's dreams. Be your own boss. Right. And then the thing they don't realize is they're dangling that hat way out there and say, hey, I, 
I'll feel better when I'm a business owner making a million dollars a year. Or they're not qualified, right? They see the after picture. They right. see the after picture of Josh, right. 42 months or 48. Right. I I wish it was 48. 70 million. But whatever. We see the after picture of Josh and we don't see. It's like the after picture of someone lost a lot of weight. Now they're ripped. And they're like, that's what I want to be. And it's like, right. bro, you weren't. As Jim Rome says, no one can do the push-ups for you. Right. Right. So, I mean, I tend to think social media for the vast majority of people is detrimental it's, to their life yeah it's neg i mean it's negative it's a big dick measuring contest right. well you got like i said you got this problem where people are shunned on shooting your ego so the problem is nowadays listen to this this is what matt just said he said you're too busy taking in context to shoot it out so listen if you turn it say i'm too busy taking in other people's ego instead of producing my own yeah and now that's a good way to look at it right so i think that's the big thing it's like god forbid josh shoots out his that 30, whatever, you know, whatever it is, salesman of the month, da, 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 da. But if I didn't do that, I'd be sitting there going, yeah. I mean, it's it's a record type of stuff, but I don't want to talk about <laughs> me right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, you know, it's in the By world, the way, I don't think anyone's fact checking. No, they don't need to fact check. Just understand. If I had it on my back, it'd be written. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the thing is like people are trained to to throw up this. I can't broadcast my ego when in reality it's better for you to shoot that out than to take in others. So it's a two way street. Which street are you driving on? Right. Either Chris, right. let me ask Chris a, a question because he's, I think he's pretty humble and could. Sure. Do you, do you scream out your ego? I mean, I, I haven't seen it and I, I mean, we, we hang out a lot. So what? Well, I think from, I think it's talking about it. You ask. To me, yeah. man, ego is literally what you tell yourself. Right. It has well, nothing to do with other people. So you don't have to tell people how good you are or how bad you are. Right. Both of those conversations suck. Right. Right. Whether you're talking about how great you are or how like your well, life sucks. Well, no, I think you know? it's who you're, who you're around though. Cause like when you're around me, Chris told me the other month he had his best month ever in the insurance business. Yeah. And I'm like, and you weren't like, what a jerk. I yeah. just came off a really bad month. Right. Uh, and I'm, yeah, seriously, just, yeah. seriously. And that was the month I lost. And Chris is over there telling me he had his best month ever. So, you know, you know, like, you but know, you know why? Because 40 something, 48, yeah. 67, it 92, all, it all whatever blends. the number but, is. But yeah. And that's the thing though. I think that's the, who you surround yourself with. Like I want my friends, family, my circle to be pushing me by pushing themselves. Yeah. Chris is there. They're saying he yeah. had his best month. I'm saying we're cooking ribeyes. Mm. Alfredo. Hey, you know what we had the other night? Strips. Strips. New York Strips. Strips. Hey. Um, that shit don't go <laughs> No, but it, and this I'll say, I know, I know Josh kids around a lot, but he also gets serious. When I was talking, um, when Josh lost his month, that was when he had the, it's not that your ego was in check or you needed it to be in check, but I was like, so Josh, like what happened? And you're like, you're going over the specifics of the business, but none of it was an excuse. Yeah. What you said is watch next month. Yeah. Like that's exactly what you said. And that happened. Right. You know, so it wasn't that you lost a month and that things went down or whatever, whatever the excuses are. It was, well, watch me next. Right. And you're like, well, that's what I'm saying. Like you've, if I was to say the only thing that defined Josh was 42 months and then I didn't hit that, like I technically I would be a piece of shit, but at the end of the day, reality is I'm not, I'm still doing my thing. I'm still rocking it. I still look damn good. I mean, Billy, give us a little something. You're, you've now moved seats, and we got a special guest in I here. And we got the special guest. I am taking the producer role, and we have Rob Balls. Rob Ball, crypto oh, millionaire. Hey, baby. So, as a special guest of Ego, we brought in a local celebrity, Rob Balls. Thank you, boys, for having me. Rob, tell us a little about about yourself. How did you get your fame, your status, your... Started my business early on, came successful out of nowhere, then was fortunate enough to buy it on Bitcoin, and it went <laughs> to the moon! <laughs> and I know, Rob, we've uh, 
we've had a lot of talks. I know all three of us together, and it's kind of the struggles that you've had. And since you got to Bitcoin early, you're looking from becoming a millionaire, which you've done very successfully, right, to a billionaire. A B. Right? And uh, I know this whole- Capital yeah, B. Capital B. That used to be on Mr. Bell, but now it's getting transferred to- We can both have it. We can, uh, that's what I like to hear. We can both have it. Well, Mr. Boss is going for a billion, and I know, like, you know, he talks with us, and even though we buy the steaks and everything and cook them, right? Right. We, we buy them. Like, we cook he's em. just sitting there, and he's like, you know, like, how do I go from a mill to a bill? And it gets tough, you know, and kind of that, I guess you're kind of putting your worth on a billion as far as your, kind of like your ego goes, right? Kind of resting the laurels on a billion. How has that been for you? Well, I think the most important thing is to buy early and buy often. <laughs> and like I said, I was fortunate enough to buy early, and I've got my friends into it as well. So they've they've made a little bit of money off of it as well. Yeah, I think we but, bought um, late. Yeah, you might have bought a little late, but <laughs> Rob uh, Boss told us to buy when he already had the stocks, <laughs> <laughs> and he sold. <laughs> so I think I think this is a good example right here of where you should hang your hat on mm -hmm. are we hanging it off of trying to shoot for a billion or are we hanging it off of things that we can control in the everyday mm -hmm. billy you're over there you're, i mean we're not used to not having you on the camera over here i mean right 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 what tell us a little bit on your input over there about going from a millionaire to a billionaire mm -hmm. if, if you want to start with that or do you want to like shrink it down because i think there's everyone's looking at these steps that create and eventually you're going to end from million to billion. But what steps do you think you could funnel it down to that, like, the basics for anybody? The basics are for anybody. Kind of like One, be great at what you're good at. Be great at what you're good at, first of all. But first is put put in your 10,000 hours, like Gladwell says. you got to put in the time. you got to put in the effort. you got to you got to love the passion. So by doing that, you're going to establish yourself. You're going to make yourself whole. And by making yourself whole, your ego is going to rise. Your pride is going to rise. Your dollars are going to rise, too. What? Yeah, and I think like you said with the pride, and I think Chris touched on it earlier. We, we, Chris defined pride, and the big word on pride is deserve. So right. I think that's a big thing nowadays is people are shooting for the Rob Boss, and they want that billion, but have they done anything along the lines to deserve it? So to me, I have no sympathy when somebody's shooting like that, and then they fall all the way to the bottom. And then they're, they're, they're wanting sympathy because they're depressed. So I think that's the thing we should really be touching on is, you know, building those building blocks. And that way you deserve your outcome. And then nobody can really be hating on your pride because you've done the right things to establish or be great at what you're good at. Right. It's, it's, building, on, it's building on it, right? It's building. So, like, the outcome is the outcome. Right. Right. So every day you wake up, you wake up early, you go to the gym, you do whatever. That's something people can't take away. Right, because you can control right? it. Whether you sell three cars in a day, whether you invest in one or three bitcoins, right, has nothing to do with hundred, hundred, <laughs> hundred. If, if well, only we knew thing, the password. Another important thing is to be realistic with yourself. I mean, I started oh, out with, I got to make a hundred dollars today. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make a hundred dollars today. A hundred dollars. Eventually, scale that to a thousand. Mm -hmm. Eventually, just keep scale it to a million. Going. Yep. And another important thing is to have a good support group. I mean, um, if you're hanging out with five losers, you're going to end up being the sixth. <laughs> right. Hanging out with five millionaires, you're going to end up being the sixth. Right. So. So now we got to find five more billionaires. So I'm <laughs> looking for billionaires. The candidates are welcome. Wait a minute. There's a lot of bees here. Billionaire Billy. Bell. Boss. Boss. Look, I, I'm only saying this because it's true is billionaire starts with the bill. It mm -hmm. starts with, okay, Billy. So you're four letters on the way. I, I'm there. <laughs> duck, <laughs> duck, goose, Billy. <laughs> um, so I think, I think that's a big thing where people struggle with is the social media is, you know, they're looking at the end result and they're not worried about what gets them there. And so, like I, I, I keep harking on this on as far as the building blocks, mm -hmm. but that's things that cannot be taken away. So if Billy, if you were going to build something up of stuff that can't be taken away, what would you say for you can't be taken away? My experience. 
Nice. And you have my a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, I mean, we we joke about my age and stuff, but I mean, at the end of the day, I do turn fifty this year, and nobody I can have, take away fifty years of experience. I have learned. I have been from the tops of the top to the lows of the lows, and what I can take out from everything that I've learned from being up top and being at the bottom is that the bottom, no matter what is a solid foundation to build yourself back up. Right. Because you guys have all been there when I was at my low, when I was going through my divorce, I lost my business, I didn't have any money, and you guys saw it. And now, did I roll up and shrivel up and, and die? No. I you know, went back, built myself up, started what I wanted to do. I wanted to produce. I wanted to create. Mm-hmm. You know, Surrounded myself, like we just said, with positive people that are going to, that are going to boost me and make me better. And I've done that. I've got my crew of friends, even though they're 20 years younger than That's me. That's all right. We're here. You know, it's, it's still what I need. It's that experience that I've learned through those those uh, challenges that I've gone through that made me a better person. All right. All right. So question for you here. So you're building up on your business, which is the magician and the jock. But what did you focus on? You just touched on it a little bit. What seemed to be what you focused on? Did it seem like you focused on building yourself? And then that's what kind of sprouted your creativity or your uh, ambition or kind of like your fearless being able to fight against the odds. It seems like at the end of the day, no matter what, you always land on yourself. Right. And that's where you rebuild from. Because I want to build my legacy. Perfect. That's what I want to build. But at the end of the day, it's all about leaving a legacy behind that I can be proud of, that my children can be proud of, and my friends can be a part of and say – I was part of that build, that climb. You know, it, it, I, I'm just, I'm very fortunate that I do have Jesus Christ, and he's going to edit this shit, and I'm going to have to listen to it. <laughs> well, but, you could have just ended it with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very fortunate for very fortunate. Jesus. I, am, I, well, that's I am fortunate yeah, for Jesus, but you know, because I do pray every every morning, every night. I pray for my friends, I pay, pray for my family, and I pray for myself that He drops favors on me because. I, Steve Harvey Harvey said this one time on his uh, one of his speeches. He's, I pray to God every day that he gives makes me a millionaire. He said because I've been broke enough, I don't like it. He yeah. said if I'm a millionaire, I can help other people. That's right. Mm-hmm. So you know, is I I don't feel guilty in, in asking for that. But what I was going to say is that I'm fortunate because Matt has been a big part of my life now, and he's God. I feel like we're getting married, and. uh but don't he's helped me through it. the ups don't and downs. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> ups and downs of, of what I've gone through and all you guys have. I mean, you know, I've known Chris the longest. Whoops. Well, no, actually, I know, <laughs> I've known Josh the longest, actually. Yeah. Didn't you all get in a fight? Did we all yeah, miss? he the fucker was talking shit. He was like 12 <laughs> years old. It was hey, I was, I, I'm just, <laughs> I was a stud, 165 on the basketball court, right, left hand at math. But I had put on those blocks, and here's Billy over here shooting some noise. <laughs> Josh was just boxing out, and Billy keeps talking. Why does he keep running his mouth? Yeah. He's old. But, Barely uh, making up the court. But, you know, with that, with having all these people in my life, I've actually built myself. We said earlier on the uh, show that um, you got to be proud of, of who you are. Mm-hmm. You know, have an ego about yourself. I'm more proud of who I am right now than I've ever been in my entire life. Awesome. Amen. Other than having my children, but awesome. that's. I mean, yeah, but that's like one day, you know, two days maybe. Yeah, two, a leg. Hey, a legacy is not a one day thing either. So if you want to be defined on a legacy, you're talking about something day in, day out, inside and out, and that's not only, you know, the magician and the jock. That's on you know your mental health, your physical health, your well being, your ability to help others. So I think that's a good way to look at something is. I don't want to build blank. I want to build a legacy. Right. Because a legacy kind of touches on a little bit of everything. And that kind of forces you to step out of the box and hit every angle that you're not comfortable with. Well, and and I'll say this. In order to build build your legacy. Okay. Right. Legacy is like, legacy is when people look back on things. Right. Right. So when you're legacy, when you get a check in, I want to hear the whole definition. I want to hear the whole definition of legacy. My, my definition is what you leave behind. What you leave behind. That is your legacy. Right. You know, but legacy, you'll never get credit for legacy when you're living. Gotcha. You get what I'm saying? Yep. So you have to be comfortable with yourself. Right. right. You have to be willing to do the things that you need to do. 
on a daily basis to get better, to leave things behind, whatever it is. But your legacy, whether it's good or bad, is left. And you have no say over your own legacy because it's what people say about you. Right. So when you're good, you tell people. When you're great, they they tell tell everyone. What you got, Billy? So legacy is amount of money or property left to someone in a What's the second one? The second one is... uh, (laughs) It's the Urban Dictionary. That's a raw ball (laughs) version. And it's a lot lot of legacy. (laughs) A lot of of legacy. Let's see. An applicant to a particular college or universe. This... What the hell am I on? Billy. Googling over there? I am Googling. All right. It's all about money. Billy. All right. Well, yeah, Billy's legacy. Is I, so we're going to build our own legacy. legacy. We're going to build our own legacy. I think Chris said something very interesting. Okay. And I think this is something to really take into matter here. A legacy is what people remember you by. Right. In my eye. But the idea of it, or Chris, <laughs> That's what I just said. Yeah. <laughs> but the idea of it is the day before you died, technically you're living your pinnacle and they don't remember you then. Mm mm. So that's the thing you got to remember. People won't give you love on the way up. Right. Because you technically the day before you died, supposedly you're living at your highest point and nobody's giving you love. But the day you die and then they remember what you have, now all of a sudden you got everybody loving you. That's an interesting point. So what you measure, what's the measurement? What's the measurement? The measurement isn't your age. No. The measurement isn't how much money you make. I mean... That has a decent amount to do with that it. Something. But your, me- your measurement is your impact. The yeah. measurement to me is the, the dent that you have put in your universe. Mm-hmm. Right. Full of dents. What you've left behind. What you left behind. It's what your did impact. you just say? Just what did you just say? People. Your measurement, your legacy is the measurement of your impact. The impact. The dent. The dent. And you leave like a big dent, don't you think? I would think so. I, I, I do that. I do, look, when I roll into the room, I'm doing a cannonball. <laughs> Not damn. I mean, I'm just saying, and that's the thing. And that's how the world ended the first time. <laughs> so with, with all that, with all that and being, that's a meteor joke, fellas. <laughs> so with all that being said, like putting a dent in your universe, building a legacy, being the person that you want to be surrounded by is all about creating an ego, which for me, an ego isn't a negative thing. I, I, I pride myself if someone says, man, you got a big ego. Yes, I do. Right. You know why? Because I put in the damn work. Right. They can't. Because they can't take it from you. Nobody. I can. Nobody can outwork me. I'll be the first one in the room, the last one out, and I damn well guarantee that I will try to bust their ass while I'm there. Right. Mm. And that's because my ego drives me. Right. Well, your ego is yours, and that's I think kind of what we're learning today right. is ego has nothing to do with anybody else. And I'll kind of give the flip on that. Ego is your self image, your self worth. Right. Right. When you insert your ego into other things and to other people, right, your ego takes a hit. But why the hell should someone else's success, someone else's failure, right, right, uh, whether you did, whether the result was good or bad, why should that affect your ego? You get what I'm saying? Like your ego, like what your self-worth should be is in the things that you do daily to get better. Right. Whether it's working out, whether it's reading, whether it's whatever. Giving. That is, yeah, that is you. Characteristics that can't be taken away. And I think that's, to me, the big thing on people being depressed Mm -hmm. is because they're they're not giving anything. And like, so one of my old sales managers told me this, and it never, it it didn't make a lot of sense, but it, it says, I put myself last, so I find myself first. But on the flip side, the only way I can put myself last is if I've really put myself first. Right. Because now everything is in line as far as, you know, things that make Josh click, things that don't bring me down. So that way, if there's other negative words being around, it's not bothering me. So that way I can help whoever's there move up. Right. So I know that's it sounds crazy, but the people that have no ego are depressed. And they've been conditioned by the world not to have an ego because it's bad to have the ego. But they're sitting there going, man, I can't do anything. I can't accomplish anything. I've watched, you know, TV. There's nothing but bad news on. Um, and that's why I think I think it's good to surround yourself with some egos. and right. kind of bust it up a little bit. 
Definitely. Right. People who bring you up when you're down, but also like when you start thinking you're the shit, they'll kind of bring you back down yeah, to reality. Down to a little bit. And sometimes, you know, when you got a fro. A fro, like glasses, Mouse. gold chain. But, but the, are all the people who are depressed, the best thing to do is get up and get out there, though. Yeah. You can't sit there up. and just keep it going. You got to get up there, get in the sunshine, mm-hmm. go work out, get a movie, get a sweat on. I mean, I mean, start with the basics. I mean, that's all the basics. It starts with the basics. Because, like, I mean, at the end of the day, so, you know, a lot of things I'm battling. I got some family issues going on today. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I did not go to work today. But, you know, I went to the gym this morning. I got a good workout in. I ate healthy. You got a I, fresh cut. Got a fresh cut. The house is clean. I mean, there's a lot of things lined up. Even though I didn't go to work today, it's like, how far can you only chop the tree? Right. Well, I think... Yeah, and what you identified was you need to take care of yourself, and yourself is your ego. That's yes, and you I think that saying? tying the two together because you've ever seen somebody depressed, they shiver, they sh- you know they're like you know they're like this. <laughs> Seriously, they're like down. I mean, they no matter what the world's giving them, they're down on their luck. Well, you know what mm-hmm. that is when they when they cower and they because they're so either upset about how they are and they don't want to be seen or they're afraid to let someone in. So like when we all walk into a room, no matter if it's me being the eldest or uh, who's young Jock being the youngest. No, Don, who's the youngest? You were Don. Don. Well, Bo- Rob Boss. That's Boss. Well, we, Don's, we Don's know, not with us yeah. today. We <laughs> know who the oldest Wait a minute. is. Billy, Billy, say those two things again you just said. So – it's either if you're depressed and don't want to be seen, you you have a tendency of covering up, right. shriveling yourself down. Because you, you don't want to let people in. You don't want to let people in. Or, or you're afraid to show your ego. All right. So the only reason you sh- you're, they're afraid is because they've been chastised. Right. And the only reason they're afraid to let people in is because they've been chopped. Right. Exactly. They, they've had. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's simple. They've been it's knocked down. Together. I mean, this is, si- this is simple stuff here. You know, you have to protect yourself, protect your environment, and fuck those motherfuckers. One more time? Fuck those motherfuckers. (laughs) Okay. Rob, let me ask you a question real quick. So when you walk into a room, knowing that you're a crypto millionaire, even though you don't know your password, that's okay. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out one day. (laughs) It's tonight. How do you, when you walk into a room, do you automatically just open up? Is it a conscious thing or is it just, just happens? Or is it just built up where you. It's just built up for me, honestly. I just walk in there and um, show out. Show out. I just do my thing, you know? I mean, uh, I kind of go into a room seeing. How can I turn myself from a millionaire to a billionaire? So he's got laser light focus here. Yeah, it's very consistent. And that's what you need. <laughs> that's what you need to be. But, you know, with, and I know we probably said ego a thousand times. A thousand today. times. But it, right? well, every, time it's about ego. Ego. every time you say ego, I feel like I should shudder. Like yeah, it's like well, a that's bad because word. your ego is tough. Yeah, well, we need yeah. to, we need to start training ourselves to not feel that way. We need to start training ourselves that the ego is stroke the ego. And that, that, well, as okay. Chris said in the uh, the definition, it's not <laughs> it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's it's a thing that we should all em- like embrace. Yeah, absolutely. And so you kind of brought up a point. It's kind of like how to change that, right? What's right. the biggest way to change your ego? Is your perspective. Your perspective on life. Uh, right. So whether good or bad, right? So whether you think you're going through some crazy situation, shitty. Right. Right? Guarantee there's someone doing worse. Right. Absolutely. Right? It's Absolutely. like, uh, and to quote Matt did did doje you know, which I'm pretty sure he quoted someone else in this thing. <laughs> he's got this quote. Well, he's, the well, game, he's like, way. he's like, if you're complaining about no shoes, there's people with no feet. Yep. Right. And you know what I'm Josh, saying? This is Josh's quote here, actually. He said, um, what did you say? It was people in Africa. People in people Africa are killing or starving for water and we shit in it. Yeah. In America. And cleaner water than they do. Josh right. also said this. They want to talk about my dick, but my dick's bigger than their dick. <laughs> He's talking about women talking shit to him. <laughs> So I, I will th- bring this back. We might cut let's, that. Let's bring it back a little bit. <laughs> well, when you were talking about uh, what Matt says, that the 
you complained about not having shoes and there's people that don't have feet. You know, in the episode with Peyton, what mm-hmm. really humbled yeah. me and Matt, and we actually had to stop the cameras because we need to take a moment after he said this, is that when he worked at a school, he worked at uh, Broad Creek and all mm-hmm. uh, the places, there was a kid that, that he saw that was mentally and physically handicapped. And the words that came out of his mouth was, bless his heart. Mm. Because no matter what your situation is, there's always somebody that's going to be more unfortunate than you are. Absolutely. So you should embrace whatever you have, make the best of it, and be the best person that you can. Right. And with that being said, when you go to the gym and better yourself, by God, show the world. You know, if you if you go out and help somebody, show the world. If you go out and help an old lady cross the street, show the world. Show that ego. Who cares? Who cares? Because at the end of the day, it's all about what you build and your legacy that you leave behind. That's a great, I mean, that's that's two great words right there. Who cares? And when it comes to ego, the only response should be you care. I like, care. Like, I care. I care. Right? Right. Yeah. I just, I, Chris, <laughs> I mean, I, wanted, I was waiting for uh, Bob Ross to say something, but I think that I care. Rob Boss. Rob Boss. Excuse me, Mr. Billionaire. <laughs> Who only paints perfection. Uh, but I think I think that's a big thing. Is it? If it doesn't matter who it, who it affect. I mean, it matters that I care. And because if I care, I take care of myself. And I think the big thing is you can only help others if you're taking care of yourself. So I think if we boil down the ego, it's I want to position myself that I can leave a dent in this world and I can help others. I think you're perfectly fine. Right. No matter what, anybody sh- throws shade at you or hate because they're either not physically fit, mentally fit, uh, you know, financially fit. There's something along the lines of jealousy. You don't have to worry about it if you boil your roots down and say, hey, I'm taking care of me because I'm taking care of others. Right. 100%. So I think, I think that's a big thing. Yeah, yes. and I think kind of focusing on the outcome is just – a terrible way to do that right, right? right. whether it's good or bad you can't control the outcome right because you know people who are generous when they're poor they're generous the the most you generous want to know when they're poor. more generous is when they're rich right right but people who are backstabbing they uh selfish they're gonna hoard their money right right whether they have money or not that's what they are right right and what that is is their ego. There you go. You know, it's it really it really boils all down to that. So whether you're generous, whether you're selfish, whether you're whatever. All right, Billy. <laughs> give us a little shout out on where we were just talking about and that way we can uh kind of summarize everything we got going on. So basically what I what I gather from it is and it boils down to this is kind of the motto of the show and we came up with this with one of your episodes that we filmed with you is to be great at what you're good at. And by that by being great at what you're good at you're going to build like a little small ego that's going to build, it's going to grow, it's going to be a big ego. ego. And it's okay because you've put in the dedication, you put in the hard work, and you deserve that ego. You deserve to show the pride. And don't ever have anyone discount that because it's only noise. And like Matt said, it's usually people that are below you that are making the, the, the noise mm-hmm. of disgust. Let them sit in the chair and do 100 shows on YouTube or let them you know, try to sell 42 months of cars and being the number one salesman on the lot or, you know, whatever the case may be, you got to be proud of what you're doing. Build the legacy by building your pride and ego is a good thing. I absolutely agree. I think, I think today we're breaking the stigma of ego Mm -hmm. and how it's a good thing and how it can benefit you. If you harness the power correctly, don't get me wrong. There are people that overstep the boundaries but I, I think we you don't have to harp on the outliners. I think we should focus on the meat and the potatoes. Mm. And that's focusing on the people that can use what they've worked on, what they've built on, what they've entrusted themselves on. And that way there's nobody that can take it away. Right. And I mean, as far as kind of being great at what you're good at, right? It's, it's identifying what you're good at. Right. <clears throat> you know, whatever that is. And the greatest part about that is it has nothing to do with anybody. That nope. is a oh, personal man. battle that you have to do, whether it's investing in Bitcoin. <laughs> it's all about who? It's all about the money. Hey, <laughs> <Bing> bong. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't just say it's all about you. 
And so when I think about it, I, I hope somebody here watching this video today sit there and will say, you know what, it is all about me and I'm not going to worry about what others think. And I'm going to take a step to the edge and I'm going to push myself to go over. Mm -hmm. And, and then dare I'll, yourself to look off the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Just see build what's it. out there. See what's out there. Build it. And like I said, it could be something so simple as making your bed for the day. Could be as working out for the day. Could be as trying as hard as I can at my job. Could be learning something new every single day. But that's the little success you build off of. And that's what creates it. Right. I guess the key is effort. Just put effort in yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's... Effort has nothing to do with the outcome. No. It has nothing to do with the amount of money you make, with uh, the lack of money that you have, whatever it is. Effort is you. Right. You know? And it, there are a ton of people who make no money who have a ton of effort. Right. You right? never talk shit about people that are putting out a lot of effort. Right. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, never you know, talk shit about that. You know You're... what you do is when, you know, and I know this has happened in my life, is I may have not been making the amount that I wanted to do, Today. but the amount of effort, the amount of ownership that I took in what I was doing, people who were more successful recognized it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I kind of today is kind of the being an entrepreneur and doing all that stuff for yourself, but don't underestimate the value of working for someone who has already done it. Absolutely. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, that like what better mentor, you know, um, it's kind of one of those things is why teach me when you haven't done it yourself? That's right. You know, and that's kind of, you know, part of my ego is saying that, but right. when someone has done it themselves, let them guide you. Like why, why reinvent the wheel when the wheel works perfect? That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's you kind of like saying build your own wheel. Kind it's, of deal. it's kind of like bowling, <laughs> but seriously, and you think about it and you put the railings up, Oh, a bad bowler, ding, 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 Dong strike. Right. Strike. And the rails are people who have paved the, the way, way for you. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And I think today's world is they've, they've <laughs> shunned you on working for other people or building your success off of others. So I think, like I said, I think if I was in a rut or worried about what other people were saying, I would really just boil down to focusing on myself, focusing on what I could control, putting earplugs in. And that way I don't have to worry about the noise. And next thing you know, you're going to be getting more noise because it's going to be haters everywhere. Mm -hmm. And speaking of haters, if you ain't got haters, you ain't doing something right. You damn right. Excuse me, Mike, check one, two. Can you say that again? If you ain't got haters, you ain't doing something Billy, what do you say here? Hot damn it. Woo, dog it. You. <laughs> like, you're like the dude. God. So I want to. I, I want to do this. I want, I want to go around the horn here. And Chris, I want you to just tell me one thing that you've taken away from this. Well, I've taken away. I should have gotten Bitcoin a lot earlier. Um, <laughs> the other thing is that when people say get your ego in check, normally what that means is your ego is too high, right? Which you need people to tell you when you're kind of. Yeah, well, this was your topic. So that's. It. Well, Billy, we'll cut your mic. Um, <laughs> Billy's ego over there. Um, no, but ego has nothing to do with good or bad. Right. You know, ego has to do with how you view yourself, you know, which in turn means whether you're depressed or whether you're living high on the hog, that is your ego. Right. And I think the biggest way to change your ego is your perspective. So whether that's friends, whether that's what you do on a daily basis or the content you consume and the information that you spit out. That has all to do with your ego. So just get your ego in check. That's not a bad thing. That's not a good thing. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, for me, I would say it's kind of protecting yourself from the highs and the lows. And that was a big thing I learned when I first started my career. An older guy told me, he said, you know, you never want the highs to be so high and you never want the lows to be so low. Right. And I never understood what that meant until later in life when if you don't have your lows built up, and you have your highs too high, that's a long way to fall. She's going to crash. Mm -hmm. She's going to crash. She's going to crash. So it's kind of like the stock market. It's building yourself up where you know all your steps are lined up. So even if you don't make the next step, you're only going to land on this step. And even if you lose two steps, you're, you're not going that far down. So I think that's the thing is protecting yourself by protecting your environment. I think that's a big thing is protecting your environment. environment. 
So whether that be your emotional environment, spiritual environment, physical environment, friendship environment, protect yourself so that way your ups aren't so high, your lows aren't so low, and that way you can kind of just gradually build it, but you never have to worry about shooting up here and then shooting all the way down. Right. Yeah, and just to touch on that, and whoever quoted this, I'm sure we'll find out, just like stock market, just like with ego, the stock market doesn't make you rich. It keeps you rich. Shoot. You know what I'm saying? Very ego good. don't make you rich. It keeps you rich. It keeps you rich. Rob Boss, new to the Let's, channel. Woo! Welcome. Thank you so much for coming in to I mean, anyone with that. With, with us today. Head of hair. Like, so Pantene you, you commercial. Came, you came halfway through there, but what did you get from from this conversation so far? Um, I think ego and confidence kind of go hand in hand with each other and you're not going to find any successful people that aren't confident in themselves. Yeah, right. 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 You got to be able to bet on yourself. And I mean, if you're having if you're having the ups and downs like Josh was talking about, then you got to do whatever you got to do to figure out how to get back up. Right. Damn you right. Look, look hey, yourself. let's stay up. You stay up. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah, babe. But, I mean, you yeah. can just go sit, just go stare at yourself in the mirror and say, "I'm gonna have a good day. I'm gonna kill it today. I'm gonna kill it today." Say that five, ten times. Yeah. And, and yeah, then you'll be successful. Dude, yeah. And just we'll leave on this. Babe Ruth, when he set the home run record, he set the strikeout record. Right. There you go. I'm and also, one more statement, too. Someone said this, a famous person. I can't figure it out. But they said, I decided a long time ago I was going to have a great day. Today was going right. to be a good day. Right. Let's end on that. And I want everyone here watching to have a great day today. So Today's let's get it. going to be a good day. And if so, you ain't hit the subscribe so, button. So my, and my if you're still here, quick, God bless you. <laughs> My takeaway is that, is that ego is a journey. Enjoy your journey. Enjoy Guys, your journey. do us a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. Right? Smash that like Smash button. Smash the like go. button. Like. We'll see <laughs> you on the next episode.